Steve, we got Purdue coming to town. Yeah, you know how exciting. Yes. How, ex how exciting. Um, yeah. Jeff, the fighting Jeff Brahms, they are, uh, you know, playing uh, outstanding offensive football with that throwing attack. And, uh, you know, I am uh, interested to see. I didn't get to watch a whole lot of that game last week. We were covering the end of the – covering the interviews, and then I was in a car driving from Lincoln back to Omaha where I was staying, and I'm listening to it. On uh, Sirius, uh, really, it was kind of a cut in. That game was coming down to the end, and so was the Cincinnati game, and so was the TCU game and the Baylor game. So it was all kind of coming to a head at one time. So it was kind of getting drips and drabs here and there. But it sounded like Purdue was out to a 21 to 7 lead. Michigan State tied it up, and then Purdue on a barrage of field goals in the second half kind of put it away and Michigan State wasn't able to, to stay with them. So, um, you know, to me, it, it sounds like Purdue's not a team that's going to try and run the ball. Uh, Ohio State's pass defense is going to be extremely tested. Is anybody up for the challenge of containing David Bell in the two games against top five teams, Iowa and Michigan State? He's got something like 28 or 30 catches for almost for uh, well over 400 yards, I believe. So uh, that's uh, something Aiden O'Connell threw for over 520 yards. And I believe I read it was the fifth most yards ever by a quarterback in a Big Ten conference game. So uh, obviously uh, they, they're in a groove when it comes to throwing the football. So the things I come back to are pressure. Uh, from the Ohio State uh, front four, which has been outstanding here the last four games. 19 sacks for Ohio State. 19 of their 33 sacks for the season have come in the last four games. Uh, the other 14 were in the first five games. So they've really ramped up the the pressure, you know, gone from averaging about three a game to close to five a game uh, here in this last four games. And Tyreek Smith is having an out-of-body experience, it seems, every week. Uh, for the Buckeyes, uh, Zach Harrison is getting after people. Uh, Haskell Garrett was limited this past week, some type of an injury issue with him. He played less than 20 plays, I believe. So need to get him healthy. But uh, pressure is one. Locating and covering David Bell is two. And three, above all else, I mean, Michigan State at least forced them. I think they had to kick four field goals last week as well. Uh, and scoring 40 points. So, uh, however that shook out, uh, in the red zone, keep them out of the end zone, make them uh, kick field goals, because they're going to move it, it seems, between the 20s. And, uh, you know, we'll see from there. Is their defense ready for what Ohio State's going to unleash on them? That's a big question. Uh, and Ohio State, above all else, has got to get back to running the football. I crunched some numbers on that today. In the first four Big Ten games, Ohio State averaged about 190 yards and six yards per carry. Uh, first four Big Ten games, the last two games against Penn State and Nebraska, the average has been about 120 yards and just under four yards per carry, like 3.9. So tremendous difference these last two games and their inability to run the ball when they want to run the ball. Yes, at the end of the Nebraska game, Henderson did have runs, I think, of 11 and 22 yards on the last series, but those were his two best runs of the day. And uh, it came when they had to have it, obviously move the sticks, keep the clock rolling. Uh, but now you need to be able to do that from the first quarter on. Uh, maybe that'll go a little better against Purdue. But uh, George Karloftis, I think, is the guy that uh, must be blocked. Uh, he is a one-man wrecking crew. Uh, for Purdue on their front and, uh, you know, in that Kerrigan mold of years ago, that type of a guy that they have that is just a, a one-man machine up front. Yeah, the, the Karloftis battle will be a nice preview for what Ohio State will face on both sides against Michigan's defensive ends. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you take away the, the 2010 game, these two teams have split the last eight games. I mean, they've split the last three – the last six games – with Purdue and Ohio State. So there is, um, for for whatever reason, things are always, have been iffy between these two teams and uh, they probably shouldn't be. And yet here Ohio State is 
four and four over the last eight matchups again throwing out the 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 redacted 2010 game but i love yeah. that word i love using that <laughs> word in this case but i saw a question who's going to defend david bell like i'm look it's not just going to be one guy i don't think i mean they'll probably try to give him some help but whatever side of the field he lines up on it'll be denzel burke or cam brown or seven banks i'm looking i'm looking forward to seeing what Dev, uh, denzel burke does like this is going to be his biggest test and this is if, if you see somebody uh, you see a cornerback giving up some yards to david bell uh, that's what david bell does and that's what purdue does because they target him gosh probably at least a dozen times a game and so they know they know how to butter the bread they know where the, the bread is located they know where the butter is located they've got the butter knife it's not a, a hard butter right out of the fridge. It's room temperature. It's spreads ketchup very, butter. It's it's you can just squeeze the butter on. That's that's a great. And that's point. always yeah. tricky. You got to be thinking beforehand. Let's get the butter out of the fridge early because then it sucks when you're ready for the mm-hmm. bread and the butter and you can't. You're ripping up your bread trying there, to spread the butter. There, the there is no bread being torn here. The the butter was put out on Friday. The bread <laughs> is 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 you know nice as well. But yeah, like I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Ohio State. I mean, Steve touched on all of these different things that that I'm just going to repeat. But Ohio State rushed for what 90 yards last week. They need to do obviously better than that. I saw somebody mention all of the pass play calls. Ryan Day was asked about that this week, and he's like, oh, you know, a bunch of those are RPOs, the run pass option. It depends on what the defense is doing, and they're forcing passes, so it's going to look a little out of whack. And also the wide passes outside. Those are essentially running plays. So when they throw those screens out wide, it, it counts as a pass, but they count – the coaches themselves count it as a run. So I think it was 54 passes to 30 rushes, but it is, somehow it, it's actually closer to being balanced because however many of those, say 10 to 15 of those plays are RPOs and you know they could have been runs if the defense had been you know backed up and allowing for that. But – uh, it's still uh, very, very, very out of character for Ohio State to throw that m- much when they're not losing by three touchdowns in West Lafayette or in Iowa City like they have in the past. And and so just get back to running the ball a little bit, trust your run, maybe maybe do some of it more outside the tackles than between the tackles and, and see what happens there. And I do wonder if at some point they, they know Noah Ruggles is good now. Will they continue to rely on him? I, I mentioned this on, on, on my own podcast maybe earlier in the week or so. Would it be better for Ohio State's red zone offense if Noah Ruggles was bad and they would realize, you know what, we're going to have to use this fourth down for offense rather than just yeah. settling for another 37-yard field goal? All right. I got a lot of little factoids that I'll throw out. A lot of this will appear in my tail of the tape that runs tomorrow on Buckeye Scoop. Uh, Steve is exactly right about Bell having his uh, best games again in the biggest games, something like four something yardage wise, 20 plus receptions, both double figure games, um, everything going on there. But he only has one game with multiple touchdown receptions, and that's UConn and UConn is horrible. But so for whatever reason, he gets a lot of yardage, a lot of yardage, a couple of 200 plus yard games, but it's only found the end zone. Uh, you know, once in every game or zero, except for UConn. Um, Purdue is a team cannot run the ball uh, in nine games. They have seven of the nine games. They've not rushed for a hundred yards. The only time that they've rushed for more than 120 yards was that once again against UConn, they ran for about a buck 16 against Nebraska uh, with one touchdown. Now Purdue That doesn't necessarily – that's not a huge indicator of their success in the series. And I looked at the series between Ohio State and Purdue going all the way back through the 2000 game, which was 13 games. In Purdue's wins, they average 104 yards on the ground. and their losses, they average 60. And then overall, it's about 77. So it's not like they're necessarily running a lot. 161 is a high watermark. That was in the 18 game, and a lot of that came on a DJ Knox 40-yard touchdown. But I think it's more important for Ohio State as a running team. Ohio State averages about 159 yards a game against uh, Purdue. In its losses, though, it's only averaging 104 yards. And in its wins, 
I'm it, or I'm in the average game is 138, 159 in wins, 104 in losses. So Ohio State has to come back out and do a lot better than what it's done running the ball. The last time that Ohio State was held to less than 100 yards in back to back games, 2018, Minnesota, and the second game being Purdue. So run the ball, find success, win the game, profit, drink beer. <laughs>